I'm going to go through uh, some really important things you need to know when you're getting started. Uh, you're inside of SketchUp here and you've probably got this toolbar up here which is plus spec or you might have plus design build depending on the model that you're using and you're thinking where do I start? Well, you know, you can actually get straight into it and start drawing walls and things like that. However, it's good to understand the fundamentals of SketchUp which is basically the tool that I'm inside of. Now, if you're not sure how to navigate and do what I'm doing now, uh, you should look at the navigation video. Uh, but if you look at my mouse, you'll probably figure it out pretty quickly. Now, there's several things that you really need to know. We have tools up here. One is a line tool. We've got an eraser tool, pretty self-explanatory. Arc, shapes, push, pull. I'm gonna show you what they do one by one. I'm gonna choose the line tool and I'm going to left click and I'm gonna move my mouse You'll notice that it's on an axis there, that's the green axis, and if I move it this way, you'll notice I'll find a red axis here somewhere. There we go, right? And if I actually go down to here on an axis and I push shift, it will lock it to that axis so I can line it back up with my first point. Same thing happens when you use the wall tool. Okay, now I want to explain something about what it is that I've drawn. Obviously, it's a square. However, when I click on the edge there, you'll notice that it's gone blue. And if I click on every individual edge, it's gone blue. So the space bar tool enables me to select things. Now, if I select on the face, you'll notice it's gone dotted. So we've got several different things. We've got a face, we have an edge, and we also have an end point, which is basically the intersection of the two edges. It's kind of important to know that. If you wanted to move something, the move tool up here will enable you to move either edges, endpoints, or faces, right? So if I moved a, an edge, you'll notice it made the, the rectangle bigger, bigger. However, if I moved an endpoint, everything else stays where it is, and it's just moving that point, which is something that's important to know. Right, if I hold it shift, it will hold it onto an axis. If I let go of shift, it could go anywhere. If I use my up and down buttons or left and right buttons, you'll notice that the left button on my keyboard has actually locked it to an axis. And if I go to my right button, it's locked to the axis. If I go up, it's locked it to a vertical axis. They're all important things to know. Not so much that you need to actually draw SketchUp geometry when using Plus because it automates most of it. However, sometimes you might want to use SketchUp to create like formwork, like you would in construction, you'd pour on top of ply maybe. Uh, so it's important to know how to do those things. Now, going up to the top here and actually using uh, a tool actually has a shortcut associated with it, right? So instead, if I click spacebar, it goes to my select tool, right? Select tool will basically tell SketchUp to select something. And if I use my erase tool, obviously we know it's gonna happen. It, re it removed an edge, and because that edge is removed, I no longer have a face. It's kind of makes sense, right? And when I use my line tool, eventually I get so tired of going back up to these uh, icons here that I should learn how to use shortcuts. So essentially, if I push L on my keyboard, it brought up the line tool, right? And if I used P, which I haven't got to yet, it actually selected the push pull tool. So I can left click and I can left click and hold and push up so I can push pull. If I actually push R, is basically the keyboard shortcut for rectangle. And you'll notice that now I'm constantly in the rectangle tool. So spacebar is my select tool. Uh, L is my line tool. Spacebar out of that to get out of a tool or escape sometimes. And R is rectangle. And A is arc. So an arc, if I selected an arc and I want to draw an arc from here to here, I can now draw my arc. If I go push pull, which is here, which is the keyboard shortcut is P, I can start to subtract from my model and I can start to create really good things. So space bar, P, push pull, and away we go. If I push control at the same time, I can actually add on top of. Uh, so if I just go push pull without control, you notice it's just extending. If I push control now, 
you'll notice that it added another uh, section onto what I was push pulling. And I can push pull different things around and I can create very, very quickly or mock up models uh, that I wanted to do. This geometry also enables you to actually, uh, as I said before, like form work to actually create things using plus B. So if I went E, which is eraser E, I can erase these lines out of here and I can actually use the face, so spacebar, face, and I can create joists from this if I wanted to, or a slab or anything that I wanted to, a roof. Uh, there's so many things that I could actually create uh, from this formwork, right? So if I go here and go submit, I can actually create joists on top of my face, right? So the formwork is, is handy. And you can use this formwork for creating roofs, as I mentioned before. So I use R as a rectangle tool, and I'm going to actually put another rectangle across here, and then I'm going to go E for arrays, and then I can go P for push-pull, and I can kind of create two levels there. And if I selected those, spacebar, and I push shift, I can select two different faces, which maybe I could draw a roof on. So if I right click and I'm using plus back, I can go roof, create roof. And it'll create a multi-layered roof according to the selections that I chose. So I might want to change my pitch, it could be ratio or pitch to 22 degrees and go submit. It created a roof for me. So it's really important that you understand the fundamentals of SketchUp here. And I basically touched on move before as well. Why would you want to use the move tool if everything was uh, done with plus eight? Well, the truth is, is that I might want to move this roof from left to right or so on. So if I just go to my move tool or M as a keyboard shortcut, I can actually move it. You can see I'm just moving it with my mouse, but if I hold uh, push down my left hand arrow button, it's actually locked it to an axis. So I can line that roof up with the outside of something. So say that selection there or the end of those joists. And it's really handy to be able to do that type of thing. Now, in some cases, you're going to want to create your own keyboard shortcuts, especially if you're using the plus big tools, because you don't want to have to go up here and go wall and then wall and then, you know, start to trace around things. It's just kind of slow, you know. So by the time I did that, I could have done a million different things, you know. I could have, uh, I don't know, done a lot of things. So let me show you how to create a shortcut. And this is in Windows. So I'm going to go to Windows. I'm going to go down to Preferences. And I'm going to go down to shortcuts. And I can filter shortcuts here. So I actually uh, created my own shortcuts. So for instance, hide. Sometimes I like to hide things so that I can see other things. So if you type in the top here, hide, and I think this is a really important one, and you uh, go and find edit hide, and you click in here and you type H, shift H or H or whatever it is, I'm actually just going to go H and go plus, you'll notice I've already done it, and go plus, and yes, and go okay, you can do, you can now save H as a keyboard shortcut. You can continue to do this before you go, in, but the main thing is before you close it, you push okay, and you can create one. I also have one for the wall tool, so W is wall, and it automatically opens up my wall tool. Uh, so that's gonna help you out a lot. So if the things that you're doing repetition, you go, I'm sick of having to go and click on that tool or that tool or that tool, and you wanna cut, set up a keyboard shortcut, that's a good uh, idea. Now, I set up that keyboard shortcut called H, so for instance, if I wanted to hide that roof, I can uh, just basically select the roof and go hide, and it's hidden that roof. If I wanted to select these joists, I can hide them, and you can see them. If you ever wanna get them back, you can go view hidden geometry or view hidden objects according to the version, and you can right click and say unhide. Right. Hope it helps out guys. Really important to, to watch this over a few times and try and do what I've done. If you like the video, push like. If you didn't like it, push dislike and tell us why because it helps out a lot. Good on you guys. Happy drawing.